Hello, and welcome to Games Broadcasting and BS with Nick and Wendy. My name's Nick. We got Wendy over I'm here. Wendy. Hello. What's up? Hello. Hello. Hopefully hello. you guys are all doing well today. All right. It's uh, it's Wednesday over here. Maybe it's Thursday. Maybe it's Friday. Ooh, that Depending sounds like on a good when one. when this gets uh, uploaded. Hopefully soon. Yeah. So. Recording live right now, Wednesday night. My name's Nickinator15 on the interwebs. That's uh, Twitch, Twitter, Yeah. <laughs> What else? YouTube, except YouTube. for Instagram. All right, that's the real Nickinator. All right, um, it's a good time. Follow me on social media. I like to post some good things on there. Mm -hmm. Wendy, where the where can the people find you at? I am the Bravo Chick on the interwebs. Um, Twitch.tv slash Bravo Chick and at Bravo Chick Ten at Twitter and on Instagram. All right, I'm not on the YouTubes because I don't like to edit. <laughs> yeah, that honestly, it's mm. a it's a struggle over Gross. here too. Um, oh. You're producer well, Nick. You're 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 great at it. Um, I've slowed down round a lot of recently. For, for, round of applause for producer Nick. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, last week we uh, we did the Gamescom podcast. That was yep. all about games. All right. So if you're uh, into games, yes. take a look at that one from last week. Mm -hmm. Literally named Gamescom Special because Gamescom it was special. An extra podcast we came on and did for um, for the peoples. And mm -hmm. for ourselves too, we like to talk about games. So, yeah, this we got week, our nerd on last week for sure. Exactly, and it was a great time. I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was so good talking about all the new games coming out and everything that's come out. So, Just blast. Um, this week we are getting back into the um, normal swing of things on the podcast. regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, so we are going to be you know talking about the BS and the broadcasting portion a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. I think I, I kind of got us caught up this week. We are uh, talking about what we've been playing. Yeah. Which for um, me hasn't changed much. Same. <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot. Aren't we so interesting? I've been doing a lot of trucking and trucking with a side of trucking. I've started doing some modded American Truck Simulator and uh, having a lot of fun with it. And um, yeah, enjoying my truck and man truck. Yeah. Get your truck on. Yeah, so for me, I've actually, so just recently I've uh, started school here. I've started classes, mm -hmm. so things are getting a little bit busy for me. But without um, sacrificing games too much, I have been diving more into Factorio. I've started yeah. up doing the um, the space exploration mod pack. Mm -hmm. We've been diving into that save. I think I've done three streams on it so far. And I think maybe that save is around like 30 hours. That's Incredible. I think I'm I'm averaging about ten hours a stream on that so far. So you're playing a mod pack that's pretty uh pretty deep as well, right? Oh oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah. You get to dive into the space and you get to you know send spaceships everywhere. But um, I haven't gotten that far. I'm still on my own home planet. But one day maybe one day. uh maybe NASA should play that game and they could figure out how to get Artemis off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you know oh it, man had to, had to throw a little shade at you nasa yeah yeah well spacex too you know they gotta get yeah. to mars right you gotta that's get to mars. true right. are they gonna go to mars from this is kind of a like side thing are yeah, they gonna go to mars from earth or from the moon the moon they're gonna build a like a, a base on the moon to mm -hmm. launch the rocket to go to mars from the moon what is the time frame on this like? Like, is it going to happen next decade? Is it going to be in like two decades? Is it going to happen in my lifetime? Man, it's been a while since I read about this, but I think <laughs> they were planning on, I think it's the range of 2024 to 2025. So a couple of years that from now. That soon? I think. No. I think. So no way. the way launching to Mars is, is you have small windows every four to five years to do it. Oh. You, you oh, got a when small like window. Earth and Mars are like closer and closer yeah, together. Yeah, the way it aligns. Um, how about this? Next podcast, um, I'm going to do a little bit of research for you guys. I'll come back on. There right? we so go. you guys don't even have to look it up. I, we all live busy lives out here. That's right? right. And somehow you're choosing to listen to us on this podcast with your time. So thank you very much. If you've even made it this far, which is like five minutes. <laughs> If you say like space and and whatnot doesn't have anything to do with science, well, or science, 
space has everything to do with science. If you think space doesn't have anything to do with gaming, you're very, very wrong. Because like Nick said, he's playing a space mod in Factorio. And uh, there's an, another really cool space game called KSP. I can't play it because I don't have a, a rocket engineering PhD. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I like watching right? people play it, you know. But, yeah. So, yeah. There are so many games space out there cool. that are on space. Like, it's pretty oh, yeah. wild. No like Man's Sky is. Spaceship Builder, yeah. Um, like yeah, there's a lot of space Space mechanic games. and oh, yeah. all kind of stuff like that. A lot of crazy stuff out there to if you want to dive into the space world. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm doing a little bit of research for you on the whole Mars mission, and I'll All come right. back to you guys. I'm looking forward to that next podcast. Hell yeah! Yeah. So, um, I guess we should head into the gaming news section. Um, it's not quite news anymore because you know this was written three weeks ago. But Sony is increasing the price of the PlayStation Five. Included countries and regions are Europe, the United Kingdom, Japan, China, Australia, Mexico, and Canada. That's not so, crazy. So uh, it looks like we lucked out Americans, but yeah, the fact that um, the fact that they're raising the price kind of sucks. Yeah, well, you know, the price of just about everything in the world is going up, all right? Isn't Pretty soon we're going to have to be working 10 jobs and cutting off some of our limbs and stuff in order to be able to afford anything. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the world of 2022, where inflation is skyrocketing right. to space. All right, speaking of space, goddamn. <laughs> right. Pretty soon, pretty soon, inflation's gonna be on Mars, and we're gonna still be back here on Earth. Yeah, like we can send billionaires <laughs> into space, but no one can afford a loaf of bread because it's so yeah. damn expensive. But, Gotta go sell my kidney so I can get some groceries. But anyway, anyhow, <laughs> PlayStation going up, but I guess. Guess the Xbox and Nintendo Switch are not going up in price. This, like, I feel like Sony did a very big disservice to themselves because, oh, Sony, poor pitiful Sony, got to raise game prices because Sony is struggling. Like, really, 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 Sony? But, like, what an opening for, for the Xbox and Nintendo for them to come out and just plaster, you know, Sony with ads being like, oh. You're going up on your console. Guess what? We're not, you know, that I've always been a lifelong um, Sony PlayStation girl. But that if, if I was it, going to get a console, I would take a hard look at the Xbox and uh, the, the Nintendo Switch for sure over the PlayStation right now. Especially yeah. considering the PlayStation is like more rare than unicorn poop. So, you know, they're so hard That's to get fair. your hands on. I'm I'm still sticking to my PC. All right. PC player Same. right here. We're sticking right Little to win. it. And you know what? Steam Deck's out there, so... There you go. That's like my Nintendo Switch. I still want to get one of those. I'm working on it. Maybe this year, really, maybe next year. We'll see. I really want to get a Switch, too, though. I really, really do. <laughs> yeah, the Switch fun. would be nice um, for the Nintendo games, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. They have a lot of party games that would be fun. Yeah. Do some Mario Kart me. I haven't played um, like Mario Party and Mario Kart in a little while now, so... Gosh, me neither. <laughs> But no, I, I think the Steam Deck would be awesome, right? You know, I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to school now, so I'm gonna be stuck at the school. It's only three days a week I go out, right? Right now, so mm -hmm. it's not like too. It's not too crazy, but you know, at lunchtime, you know, it's I got a whole hour of lunch, and I'm not yeah. gonna take up a whole hour to eat. So I think it'd be mm -hmm. nice to have my my deck, my Steam Deck, or something there Hell to yeah. open up my Steam library and play, play something. Play some games, play some Factorio while you're chilling. Yeah, except. I don't know how I feel about it. Plaque Factor on a hell handheld now. And that I looked into it. And I'm like, oh, it'd be neat. Like I was, I was thinking about that before, but I don't know how it would be on the handheld. I've heard I people. I was play. wondering that. Like, is it literally any game in your Steam library you can play? Because I think what would trucking limited. be like on there? Okay, I was wondering. I they, was about to wonder. They only. I think there's only certain ones that have been approved. I think actually most of them are something. But I don't mm -hmm. know exactly how it works. Um, I don't own a Steam Deck, so I haven't really looked into that. Mm -hmm. But it looks like a phenomenal portable device. Um, right. It would be great for things that you can easily use a controller on because mm -hmm. it's kind of set up like that. It's like a gamepad. Um, yeah. I think um, platformers would be amazing on there. Absolutely. And I can, I can definitely say that uh, in 2019, whilst on vacation, I had uh, gotten a sudden uh, really bad urge to play Stardew Valley. And, like, the last two days, I was just miserable because it's like, all I want to do is go home and play Stardew Valley. If I would have had my Steam, if, you know, if Steam Deck would have been a thing in 2019, I would have had one. 
I was just be like, oh, I'm going to get my Stardew Valley on right here in the, the, the Tennessee, you know, Appalachian Mountains. It's going to be yep. so cool. <laughs> yeah, no, like uh, for road trips or something, it would be perfect, mm-hmm. right? You just... What is the price point on that uh, Steam Deck? Do you know? I know the Canadian price point. Canadian mm-hmm. dollars, because I'm Canadian. The Canadian ranges from 500 to 860 dollars, depending on Ooh. the thing. So I think in American terms, take like, like at least 100 dollars off. Four, no, yeah. it's more like 300 maybe. Three to 500. No, it'd maybe. be 350. 350, I think. Hold on. What? Let me just get the. Cat what is it? Who, what's the conversion? 380. Rate? 500 Canadian is 380. 860 is 655 dollars. So okay. it seems like it's like 380 to 650. Golly, that that's a lot. That would uh, I could buy my new CPU for that. <laughs> so that that would be hard as a PC gamer to spend that kind of money. Uh, then again, you know the Nintendo Switch too, man. It's uh it's kind of you can take it too can't you like it's not just something it's not like yeah. a playstation or a yeah. xbox it's it's more mobile you pay for the portability right you really pay yeah. for that portability but mm-hmm. for some people it's really worth it especially if you're out there you know traveling a little bit more um, mm-hmm. it's definitely worth it so heck yeah like, could you imagine going on a plane or something you just you play any game like your steem library on a plane or something it would be wicked that would be sp- Pretty freaking Because cool. sometimes you got an eight hour <laughs> flight, you know, I've never personally been on a plane, but I heard it can get pretty damn boring if you don't have things to do. Yeah, like, um, I've never been on a plane either, but I've, I've heard the horror stories for sure. But anyway, um, Oculus or, or Sony PlayStation isn't the only thing getting a price hike. The Oculus 2 is also getting a price increase. I think it's getting a price increase of approximately $50, so... Sad to say. Not too crazy, but I don't know what the price... I think, is it $400, I think, right now or something? Something like something that. Something around that, right? Yeah. Um, I, I never bought... I bought the Oculus Rift S. is the first mm-hmm. VR headset I purchased. Yeah. And I think I paid four something for it. Canadian. And... Yeah. It was a pretty good headset, but, you know, I think the Oculus 2, isn't that the, the wireless one? I think I that's think the wireless so. yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just... um. I really, I've been talking about getting um, the Oculus since my birthday back in February, and I just keep hemming and hawing on it and getting other things instead. I just, I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to invest in it and then not like it. So, um, jury is still out on that. Like, I sometimes I think I would like it. Other times I feel like it would sit on a shelf and gather dust. So To be fair, know, we'll that's see. what my current VR headset is doing, so... Mm-hmm sitting on a shelf and gathering dust yeah, because i bought a new vr headset i bought the um hp reverb g2 mm-hmm. and that has a higher resolution than the yeah. oculus i had which is good for like simulation games so if you're sitting in the chair and playing like a racing game or a simulator really mm-hmm. good because it's got that higher resolution screen um, right whereas in the other models might have better tracking which is good mm-hmm. for like you know beat saber or you know, things that require the, the tracking on their own. A lot remotes. of movement, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but unfortunately, I haven't used it enough. And kind of because I have been streaming a lot more mm-hmm. instead of just playing games. And I, I haven't mm-hmm. really, I haven't really gotten the hang of like streaming and doing the VR at the same time. I gotta, I haven't, right. it's, it's something that's new and I haven't done before. I'd like to do it, but mm-hmm. it's like, it's kind of making me nervous in a way because I'm like, I've never done that before. And I, I get right. that. It's I get that way with new. Like, yeah. It's new. Like anything new is going to give you a little bit of apprehens- so, apprehension. You know, admittedly, I've been pushing it off. So yeah, it's my own fault, but you know, <laughs> VR in itself is great. <clears throat> I, I've played Beat Saber. That game's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, I've played God, just, What's that? Just watching people play Beat Saber wears me out. It's like, golly. <laughs> Talk about a workout. Oh, yeah. Holy oh, yeah. moly. It, it wears you out really good. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I've played racing games, and I thought mm-hmm. it was such a cool experience. Like, being in, in a, like the race thing. And mm-hmm. I had it so, like, where I have my hands and stuff is, like, perfectly lined up with how I see it in the thing with my right? wheel. Because, we- like, I got my wheel and everything. And it mm-hmm. was such a cool experience to be able to like turn around and look behind me, and I I can oh, hell see yeah. that right. I could see the people mm-hmm. behind me, and right. it, it was it was actually a really cool experience. I think I played Project Cars, 
um, okay. VR. Hell and yeah. it, it worked really up. well. So, hmm. and trucking, I've done a little bit of trucking um, VR. I would. Mm-hmm. Love to do more. I don't think you can do like multiplayer. Or multiplayer, something. you know. I don't. Yeah. Th- um, I don't think you can yet. I don't know. How, I don't know. I got to look into that or something. Maybe but. in the convoy mode. I don't know. Maybe I, in I convoy mode, but I know there's a big Bryant thing with truckers know. on P. Yeah, I think Bryant would know. Yeah. So, and flight sim. I think it would be really cool to do some flight sim. Right. Yeah. I think it'd be phenomenal for flight sim. But it's not good for um, like those long trips where you're sitting and doing nothing. It's good for like tour flights. Would be right. a really good setting for that. Mm-hmm. So. Um. Yeah, I thought about the Oculus first because I play a lot of simulators, so I thought it might be good for that. But um, my uh, buddy of mine, who's also a streamer on uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash nightmare underscore se, he has this software on his iPhone, and he he had the Toby, he had the Track IR, and he says it's it's his favorite so far, and it's just a program that runs on his phone, and it tracks his head movement while... He's tracking, and I think it works for, like, flying and racing games and all other kinds of types of games as well. So I'm probably going to upgrade my phone um, around my birthday, and that's going to be fun because I'll be able to utilize that software. I've always wondered, like, you know, how that would be for the viewing experience as a viewer watching a streamer with this. I haven't really paid attention too. to it. Because you know how we like, look over and look at chat, right? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be distracting for people trying to watch or something if you're always looking over? that's always that's always been one of my concerns as well like uh because you know when i stream chat is my that is my main you know focus if if people are there and they're talking i'm there they are my priority number one so i always want to put them first and i've always concerned myself with that when it came to track ir or toby or vr anything you know because like i don't want to interrupt that interaction i want to promote more of that interaction. I'm, I was always afraid that uh, any type of VR or any type of head tracking device would uh, would would prevent you know people from chatting, and I don't want to do that. I want to you know promote it. I've actually like flipped my <laughs> truck and crashed into things because I was looking at chat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it, oh, yeah. it happens pretty often where I'm like, oh crap, somebody I uh, messaged something right, so I'm looking and mm-hmm. reading, and then I'm like, oh yeah, my game. And <laughs> oh well, you know, I I I actually I, I feel like I do a pretty good job at like balancing the two, you know, mm-hmm. keeping the gameplay okay. going and you know, reading chat. Um, some streamers choose to go for the gaming content, and that's okay, you know. Yep. Whatever you want to stream, right? I've been mm-hmm. in streams where, you know, they're focused on the game and that's it. Yeah. And you like, know, they don't really pay. Maybe every five there's, minutes there's, they'll take a look at chat. There's no wrong way to stream. Exactly. You've got people that, you know, there's so many types of streamers out there. So you just do what you want to do and what you're comfortable doing and do it how you want to. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, VR. Yeah. It's interesting. Maybe one of these days you'll see me do a it VR is. stream. Yeah, there you go. Um... Callisto Protocol DLC is coming in the form of a season pass, I guess, and a deli- digital deluxe edition. This is pretty standard practice anyway for games to come out with a digital mm-hmm. deluxe and right. announce a season pass even before the games come out, mm-hmm. which uh, Callisto is December release, so it's not even out yet, right? So, Right. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me too much that uh, they announced that. Um. I'm sure when Sims 5 is, you know, announced, they're going to have their first expansion pack already ready to be talked about. <laughs> I know. And that's one game that I don't think has ever done a season pass or either they did a season pass and I didn't bother with it. But they make so much money on all those stuff DLC and, you know, expansion DLC. They, they usually like come crazy. out, they, they group expansion packs or something together into like another pack. But that's usually after a few of them come out. Right. So. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Callisto Protocol. I'm actually very interested in this game, mm-hmm. but you know, I don't got money to throw at this DLC and season pass off the bat. So right. we're just gonna get the regular game and see how it does. So yeah, I feel like um, when you get a season pass, you're really betting on the game. You're betting that the game is going to be good and that you're going to want to play the additional content that comes with it. I wonder how many times people get a season pass and then are like. Didn't even bother because I feel like <clears throat> that kind of happened with me and um, SnowRunner. Mm. Like when SnowRunner first released, I I did get the season pass, but and like 
I don't know. I enjoyed it. I think I played it with everything that came with the season pass, but I didn't get the the ones that followed the first season. I don't know. I'm just I'm always weary about stuff like that. Like, oh, I'm gonna get the season pass. What like, what if you don't like the game? Yeah. Or what if their DLC is shit? You know. I'm like that. You know. I don't pre-order games. All right. <laughs> I pre-order a game that I really, really want the day before it releases. So mm-hmm. I have it so I can like load it up and have it ready for when the release. Right. But to pre-order a game like, like for example, Hogwarts Legacy, it doesn't come out I till knew. February. I knew we were coming there. Yep. Right? <clears throat> it doesn't come out till February, but you can pre-order it right now. It's like, what if they say delay it again? Your money's exactly. just tied up with them. You're just, right? yeah, it's gone. Yeah. You know? What, it, it doesn't make a difference if you pre-order it today or pre-order it the, the day, day before. Be, yeah, the day before it comes out. At least you know, okay, the game's actually coming out tomorrow. You know, now I'm going to give them my money. Is that so. like, it's, for the most part, people are going to get a digital version of this. I don't, I don't understand how they can run out of a digital version of something. They can't. You know what I mean? Well, there's unlimited yeah. copies, right? So it's... so it's not like you're reserving your copy. It's not right. like, you know, back in the day, ooh, um, Madden 14 is coming out. I'm going to reserve my physical copy at GameStop, and I'm going to be there in line at midnight so I can get my copy or something like that, you know? We're, you don't really need to do that anymore where, you know... 10 years ago, yeah, you had to go, you might have to get a, you might want a physical copy and it would be really limited. You know, you'd re, you would want to put in that reservation, but I feel like for, you know, digital copies, you don't really need to do that. So I, I want to you know. talk about that a little bit. Midnight okay. launches or something, the game launches mm-hmm. way back. In, have you ever been to a game launch? Yes. What was your favorite launch. game launch well, that you went I didn't to? Do a, it wasn't, okay. I'm, so you never went to a store? Back. Like midnight did, or anything, right? Yeah, we did. We did that for uh, the fifth, sixth, and both seven books from Harry Potter. We I didn't do it for a game. Let's say, so you, we did, you like, did it for bo- something. Yeah, oh, so much fun. And it's exciting, right? Oh yeah. I wish I went to a, a like a launch, like mm-hmm. a, a big event for a launch. Like you know, um, I was it would say Call of Duty back in the day. Those were big events, right? Yeah, like GameStop absolutely. GameStop or EB Games would would run, right? So. Mm-hmm. Um. There, there would be lines up outside or something. Everyone's so excited to go in. They get their, their Call of Duty oh. and and whatnot. So I've always wanted to. A friend of mine, he to. set up a tent like <laughs> two days before. And I'm like, why? He's like, oh, this line's going to be crazy, but I'm getting mine first. I'm like, okay. You do you, boo. So yeah, I went two games before. <laughs> you know, that, that's crazy. Go days before and pitch a tent. Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. That's dedication right there. <laughs> that is very hardcore. I think it was for the fun. Hey. My friend Michael and I, we were oil and vinegar when it comes to video games. He's very much into like Final Fantasy and mm. World of Warcraft. And I'm like, mm, I don't want to play that. And then I'm like, look at this cool simulator. And he's like, that looks boring. And I'm like, <laughs> well, what you're playing looks boring, you know, because we're, yeah. we're all different, you know. But yeah, he, he, he waited outside of GameStop for two days. It's crazy. That is crazy. But no, like <laughs> those were huge things. And oh, yeah, it's unfortunate to see that they're not a thing anymore. It's just it doesn't all need online. to be a thing anymore. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. But it was know? such a cool experience to see. Like, I like, I love watching the videos. I've always wanted to partake, but like, you know, watching even just the videos was so cool to see everybody, you know, go in and mm-hmm. everyone's like happy. You know, they open the doors and, you know, they go in and get their game and everything. I thought it was such a cool experience, but um, yeah, that's if you yeah. pre-ordered and reserved a copy of the game. Or I guess they had some copies available there, but it was limited quantity. Right? Yeah, you if you didn't have a, you know, you reserved it, that way you knew you were getting one. And then I'm sure they, you know, depending on the GameStop said, okay, we'll take, you know, 500 more copies, and, you know, try to figure out how many, you know, they're going to sell before their next shipment or whatever. Yeah. So I'd like to hear they, from you guys. Um, All right. Have you ever been to a launch for a book a game. or a game? There you go. Yeah, because the, uh, the book um, launches for five for Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and why did I say part both parts? We did go to the, like, premieres for the movies, too, but then the seventh book. And they were a lot of fun. Like, um, they had, like, ginger, not ginger beer, um, 
yeah, I guess, what was that beer they drink? Pumpkin juice. That's what I'm thinking about. They had <laughs> pumpkin juice and they had all these little mini, you know, Harry Potter themed games set up. And there was one time they even had like a um, fortune teller come in and she was really cool. And um, yeah, and then around about 1130, they start getting you in a queue and you've already paid for your book. You know, you went, as soon as I got there. They would tell us, you know, go go pay for your book. And then right at midnight, they just open up all these boxes and just start handing them out. And That's so like, cool. Oh, so much fun. Oh, yeah. So freaking cool. So if you've been to like, a launch, what was it? And how was your experience? Yeah. Let, let us, us know. know. GBBS podcast at gmail.com. Hell, yeah. So exciting. Um, a lovely viewer uh, who has a very strange Twitch name. Uh, it's like THRSDQF or something like that. That's literally like their Twitch name, but you know, you're right. awesome. You've been letting me know and keeping me abreast so I'll know when Train Sim World 3 release and it is now released. So if you like your choo-choos, go get your choo-choo on with uh, Train Sim World 3. There you go. I've played a, a Train Train Sim World game before. I can't remember which one I it was. I can't recall which Train Sim I bought one. when I wasn't able to get the train to go down the track and I refunded it. <laughs> but um i've played railroads online and i really enjoyed that game so i don't know maybe we'll give it a chance sometime we'll see train sim world 2020 mm -hmm. which was funny enough released in 2018 <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it was called i think they changed the name honestly because i don't th i don't think it was called i think it was just train sim world or something it may have been yeah but yeah no I, it was a pretty fun game playing a train but i don't know it's something like that didn't really hold my attention for very long but you know trains are pretty cool everybody has their there's own style there's actually there's actually you know like you've got a, you have a yoke for flying mm. you have a wheel for for racing and you know truck simulators and whatnot but there and there's also like a, a unit for doing a train simulator which is kind of cool yeah there's That's a, quite the investment but yeah there's controllers for just about everything. If there's a, right? yeah. if there's a game for it, there's probably a unique dedicated controller for it. I want a surgeon simulator and I want the controls for that. <laughs> Give me oh a knife. Oh my god. What's that knife. what's that game? What's that game called? This the surgery game where you had to like pick the oh thing out of the thing. You couldn't touch the yes. uh, those oh metal god, things. Yes. I can't remember what it was. Oh, you're called. talking about operation. Operation, that's it. I thought you were talking about the other. There there is a surgery simulator on Steam, but it is awful. It is so bad. You like your hands are like this and you pick up the the freaking blade and you're like this and you're like Oh my and god. And then you're like it's 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 uh, like a it's a funny take on like a surgeon simulator. But yeah, yeah. And I was talking I've about the, wanted, uh, like... the the board game thing that was. Uh, yeah, operation. operation. That's what it was called. Yeah, operation. And you got the red light that and was... it goes eat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My grandfather freaking loved that game, man. He'd get uh, serious about it too. Yeah. <laughs> and so you got to have steady hands. And oh god, if I haven't eaten in the last like two hours, I swear I got shaky hands already. I, right. My blood yeah. sugar is terrible, so. Um, <laughs> Like sometimes um, I'll, uh, some days actually it's not too bad. I can go like hours without eating. It's fine. It's just randomly. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I'll get shaky hands and I, I, I'm like, that's how I know. I'm like, I need to eat something right now. Otherwise right. I'm not going to, I'm going to feel like, Ugh. But, that's interesting because I, I've been known to go days without eating. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an appetite. It's not like I'm, I'm not anorexic or bulimic or any of that stuff. I just, I don't have an appetite. I can't make it through a full day without eating. Well, that's good. That's that's <laughs> called being healthy, you know. Every time I leave uh, one of my doctors, he always says, now go to Dairy Queen and get a banana split. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my anyway, God. Anyway, we're getting off topic. You have some cyberpunk news? Cyberpunk news. Actually, <laughs> quite a bit of news from cyberpunk. All right. This is the game mm -hmm. that was overhyped and a little bit of a letdown on the release. However, yeah. I played it on release, and I actually enjoyed my time playing this game. I had an up-to-date computer. All right, my specs weren't, like, terrible. Probably helped a little bit with it, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I think most of the problems were on, you know, computers that couldn't necessarily handle the game. Even though it, it was minimum spec, right? You could right. still It was still over minimum specs. It still wasn't able to run the game properly. Uh, the old consoles were a huge problem. I think the, it was actually removed from the PlayStation Store on the PS4. Mm. 
I think okay. I think it was actually completely removed from there um, for at least a little bit. So it was a little bit of a rocky start to uh, the launch. Now we've had what's made it now six major updates. All right, Cyberpunk's on update one point six right now. Huge update that's uh, you know fixed even more things, added mm -hmm. some more content. They said they've added some more hidden items, um, a lot of cool things to go out and explore. Uh, some, I think, balancing changes. You know, your regular update stuff. So that was released, um, as well as mod tools, I think, were announced or released. So there's now mod tools available to the public, which is huge. Everybody has wanted this for a long time, is some mod tools on Cyberpunk. Because um, that atmosphere and the whole, like, um, the world of Vibe. Cyberpunk, like, <clears throat> if you think about it, it's like Grand Theft Auto. Mods can change yeah. the whole game and add in so much more things. And basically improve the longevity of the game, as we've seen with Grand mm. Theft Auto. Because right. I think most of the PC community plays 5M. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. where majority of players are right now. I would... I that... They're... they're yeah. I would think so. I don't think it's the online that Rockstar has. Um, I think it's 5M that probably has most of the stuff. Or at least I know there's other mods too. Um, using like Rage or something. Uh, there's like a, a police mod for Grand Theft Auto. But anyway, that's off topic from Cyberpunk. Mod Tools is amazing. And they've also released uh, or announced a DLC rather. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the one and only DLC release for Cyberpunk. One and only. Usually games, you know, might do multiple DLCs. But we are seeing only one DLC for Cyberpunk and that's it. I don't know what their future for the game is afterwards, but the DLC actually looks really cool. It kind of has yeah. um, some political stuff involved in the city, um, as well as a little bit of military action. It's like a military. It looks like a little bit mm -hmm. of a military thing. Um, okay. So it looks really good. It looks like a really cool extension on the current story, which I think is phenomenal in Cyberpunk. The story in Cyberpunk is pretty good. Like, I enjoyed all 40 hours I played on Cyberpunk, because I think that's how long it took me to get through it all. So um, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty deep game then. Yeah, 49 you, hours. You, I have 49 hours. Would you say that Cyberpunk is a victim of overhype? It was a victim of overhype, yes. I However, like, I, I've, I've actually really dove into this <laughs> on earlier podcasts, is... Mm -hmm. I said if that game did not get all the hype that it had, it would have came out and it would have just, it would have done well. Right. It would have done well. People would have played the game and went, this game's awesome. It's a pretty good game. But people, like they, like it, it wasn't just people. It was actually the developers or the publishers, I guess, rather, themselves mm -hmm. overhyped their game. Right. You know, it, it got gold certified, whatever that means, before the game was even out. <laughs> I don't know how you gold certify a game before it's even released. I, I don't know what that means, what calls for a game to be gold certified. But it was... Yeah, what does that even mean? It was I've never heard that. Portrayed saying. to be like this ultimate game changing, changer of a game, right? That like... Mm -hmm. So everyone, yeah, it was, it was pretty hyped up. But yeah, um... I, I do have hopes for this DLC. I think the base of the game is there. It's solid now. I want to go back and do another playthrough of it. Um, probably shortly before the DLC releases. I don't know. There's no release date. Probably next year. But I want to do another playthrough. Uh, the base of the game's there. And all they need is just a good story with this DLC. And it'll do well. So there you go. So you're saying that um, with mods, you could... We could possibly see like a cyberpunk role play then. That could be. I think that, cool, would be really that would be really interesting. Cyberpunk would be really really cool. That world would do really good with RP. I really do think it would. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. It would. It would be so cool. And um, because of the way that w world works, it would be a really interesting take on the RP world because it's futuristic. It really would. You got yeah. like you can mod your body with two different things, and could you imagine RPing that? Oh man. 
Like you lost your arm or something. You got a robotic (laughs) arm now. (laughs) Right. You can have that. Gotta spray some WD-40 on my joints here. It's getting a little rusty. (laughs) You know, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I've taken a step like out of the GTA roleplay. And I think in order for me to get back in the RP would take either Cyberpunk roleplay or GTA 6 roleplay. I think those are the two things that would... I kind of... I, I agree with you, and but I agree with you that I, I don't know, like, I'm a pretty, I like to consider myself as a pretty creative person, but, I, and I love, like, futuristic and space stuff. I don't know if I could roleplay in a cyberpunk world. I just don't know if I could create a character that would belong in that it's world. Not I don't know. It, it would, it would be interesting. I'd have to watch some and then figure out if it's for me or not. Right. It's like the Red Dead roleplay. I knew I'm yeah. like, eh, that's not really... I find myself, it's hard for me to roleplay in that world. It really is. It's Yeah, it really wasn't for me, I'd say. Um, but I I think it would be silly not to expect roleplay when Grand Theft Auto 6 comes. And hopefully it doesn't take them as long to uh, to to get mods up and going. Hope I would hope Rockstar would see how much... You know, the, the, the Grand Theft Auto community has embraced, like, the roleplay, you know, areas of um, of their video games and, you know, give some kind of tools or, you know, start at day one where it's ready, you know, to, yeah. to go into a, a roleplay world or something like that. That could be really, really cool. I think they'd be stupid not to. For those of you who may not know what RP or the whole roleplay world is... It's basically when you take on the character in game and try to play it to the best of your ability yep. like that is you, right? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Well, Criminals, maybe necessarily doesn't officers. reflect yourself, but you're trying to play the character you're you want You're playing wanna... a character. Yeah, You're exactly. essentially playing a character in an ongoing story, and so is everyone else around you. There's no, like, you know, AI or anything. Yeah. Every person you see is pretty real. Yeah, you it's know? make your own story, right? If you want to be, much. you know... Some big celebrity that gets jacked up on cocaine every day, and there you go. <laughs> you can be that, right? You a can DJ, portray yourself a, as that. A medic, a doctor, yeah. You know, there's anything. Um, a judge. It's <laughs> kind of play real life, but in a game. So yeah, you're in a. It's story. You're, you know, like you can do way more, way more things than what you could probably do with your own life. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And you got multiple it's, lives technically because you can just make your own character for one. Yeah, you you just like you yeah. may get shot and you may go to the hospital, but yeah. you don't. You're you are the director behind that character. If you want to kill them off permanently, that's your yeah. prerogative, you know. But like, no one can come up and say, "Oh, I sh- I shot you, therefore you're dead, therefore you're no you're no longer exist." Right. It doesn't work that. It, it role play is very very um. It has its own set of rules to abide by, mm. and that can either make or break a server, in my opinion. That and the group of people of which you play. Yeah. I It kind of left me off with a bad taste in my mouth because we ran into so like some out-of-world, out-of-game drama. And then the last world we played in, I found it just um, it didn't have enough to keep me interested in continuing. Yeah. Like, it can be definitely... Like, it can be hard to find a good... Um, like server to join mm-hmm. because these servers aren't ran by the game they're ran by a separate third party community that's trying to set up you know admins and and moderators to make sure this runs smooth and you know we're all people sometimes some people don't get along with other people and it's just how it happens right so yep uh you really have to maybe do some work into getting into a server that suits your needs there you go. But unfortunately, I do find that world has a lot of drama involved. Yeah. Because I, life has a lot of drama and it's Yeah, <laughs> I found that too like um and I don't I don't I don't like IRL drama. That's why I'm kind of like Same. I freaking love the idea of role play and if it could just stay in game, I would love yep. it, but since it can't, it's not for me. Yeah. To be completely honest. Yeah, so Anyways. like, you know, when you're when things happen in your character, you want to separate that from out of character. So yeah. maybe you come across somebody in game that you didn't like, but that's their character. So don't go out of character and and 
you know, think that's how they were out of character. Right. If they are out of character like that, then that's that's different, right? Whatever, deal mm -hmm. with it your own. But you know, whatever. Some people can't separate it, so. Right. But Anyways, yeah. um, Bioshock news. Some Bioshock news. Um, they, for the game, Bioshock now requires a third-party launcher. Yay! Another and launcher to download. Awesome. This publisher, all right. We've thrown shade at this publisher. You're not talking about 2K, are you? I'm talking about 2K. The same ones that re released these, uh, what were the sport games they do? Like basketball and... Bas yeah, 2K basketball. They yeah. Have a, I think they might have a baseball title, or they did at one point in time. Right. And they released a game, and it showed us free on Steam, yep. but it wasn't... It I think was that was the Cory or something, right? Yeah, it was a shit show is what it was, in my <laughs> opinion. There's no other way to... I can't mince words on that. It's, it was shit show. Yeah. But anyhow... They are now requiring Bioshock, which has been a game that's been out on Steam for a very long time. Bioshock 1 being 2007, Bioshock 2 being 2008, and finally Bioshock 13. Bioshock Infinite in 2013. Um, <laughs> so almost 10 years since the last game's come out, and now they're introducing a launcher behind these games through Steam. Which means they can collect more of our information and sell it for money. Take what you will from that, but... It's not a good thing. It's not. And I feel like I am always hesitant to download anything because I'm like, man, these fuckers are just getting my information and they're making a dime off of it. And I just can't stand it. It drives me insane. Yep. But yeah, <laughs> so that's that's that news on that. It's a little bit uh, a little bit that interesting. That makes you want like... Are they planning another Bioshock then? Like, why I announce this about Bioshock a game that's works. 10 years old? Yeah, you know, I, it's like... I do think. By the way, if you want to play Bioshock that's, like, almost 10 years old, you got to download our launcher. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. Appreciate you, you know? It's like, why would they come out and say that if they didn't have some, some ulterior motives? Like you said, maybe getting your information to flip it to sell. Yeah. And also maybe to... um. To say, look at our new Bioshock, and it's not on Steam, mm, you know, type deal. Yep, but, you know, we'll see, we'll see. If a new Bioshock yep. comes out and it's only on that launcher, I don't know. I, I might just have to pass it up, because... <sighs> you love those games, Nick, come on. I love the games, I've played, I love the games, and you know what? I would play those games over again before I've, I play a new one if it's behind that launcher. Yeah. So, there you go. Play the ones that are there out right go. now. But actually, don't don't play them right now. You missed your you missed your window. I'm sorry, but they're, you they're behind another no launcher, so don't open that. <laughs> don't open it. Don't do it. Yeah. And you can't even like come up with like fake information for them because you're gonna have to pay them for the game some way, shape, or yeah. form. So it's not even like you can fudge that. I know you know sometimes you can put in bogus information to a site you deem shady, and you know it doesn't really matter. That's that's true, yeah. But um, continuing with some more Bioshock stuff, I actually think this was talked about months ago, but this is something that I've come across recently, is um, Bioshock is getting a film adaption through Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. This could be they, good or uh, bad. Netflix, did, didn't Netflix do a movie on Assassin's Creed, or was that just... The Witcher. The oh, Witcher maybe they, no, right. maybe they did Assassin's Creed too. I know there was Assassin's Creed... Film, but um, The Witcher is the most recent one that's actually done really well. Mm -hmm. The Witcher is actually, um, a, well, what I've been told, I've been meaning to watch that show. It's, I was gonna say, it's a series, though, right? Yes, it's a series. See, I find Netflix knocks series out of the park versus their movies can be hit or miss, which I think is what Bioshock is. It's a movie. Um, mm -hmm. If you know Bioshock, I'm pretty sure Andrew Ryan, which is the main protagonist in Bioshock 1, is played by Tom Holland. Um, Tom Holland is usually good at playing the antagonist. The protagonist. Pro oh, sorry. So it's flipped the other way. So, yeah. 
My bad. I got the words flipped there. He's so Andrew he's Ryan used to is being the, the antagonist. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Tom Holland's usually played um, the protagonist. But you said it, it, it could be a good thing for Tom Holland to branch out of his little, you know, his to roots get, there. And, yeah, to, to do something where he doesn't get typecast has always been the good guy. And yeah. to show another side of his abilities as, right. uh, as an actor. But we'll see. I'm going to... I'm going to not have high hopes for this show. The game is phenomenal. Movie. Isn't going to be a film? This movie? This film. I'm just going to say film. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, they say it's a film. I'm going to have my, my hopes down on this film. The game was phenomenal. The, the story in the game is one of the most unique experiences in video gaming history. And a lot mm -hmm. of people will actually tell you this. Um, how the story is told and how it's done is absolutely amazing um i'll let you play the game or watch somebody play the game rather if you don't want to play the game watch somebody play the game um you played all three sets and they're on your youtube channel correct yes i've played all three bioshocks and the dlc for bioshock infinite um and i had a, a wild time playing it was really fun i wish i spent more time playing bioshock one and two i kind of mm -hmm. went through it a little bit on the quick side but bioshock infinite i definitely took a little bit more time on um right i kind of embraced the story kind of learned a little bit more and and whatnot but bioshock one and two i went a little bit quick um i ended up watching streamers and stuff play it after i played through it to gather a little bit more mm -hmm. and it seemed like these streamers probably put like twice the amount of time into the game that I did. <laughs> oh, snap. So there's that much content there then. There is. There is. To, you can go around and explore um, a little bit more and get a little bit more uh, of the story kind of in nooks and crannies and the, the map and everything. So it's definitely a game you want to take your time on and, and just take everything in. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do that. I'm trying to get but better at a, it. <laughs> but these are also the games you, you just told the people don't play because you missed your window. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why I brought up oh. watch somebody play. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Nick is an awesome host and uh, I, I really enjoyed watching you play those games there, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And I had fun playing. So, but, yeah. Absolutely. The yeah. film, I don't know what to expect with the film. So hopefully it's good, yeah. but I'm going to keep my hopes like down I, until it's out. When it comes to Netflix adaptations, I appreciate, like, um, Breaking Bad is my all-time favorite show. Um, they did El Camino telling the rest of Jesse's story. Is it the greatest thing in the world? No. Was it nice to hear the rest of Jesse's story? Yes. I wouldn't say you have to watch that movie after you watch Breaking Bad. You can or you don't have to. It's whichever way you want to turn it. That's kind of like uh, with... Yellowstone in 1883. I feel like you don't have to watch 1883. If you want to, it's there. It's phenomenal. Will I ever watch it again? Hell no. I have my reasons that I'm not going to spoil. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I feel like films are hit and miss with, uh, with Netflix, whereas versus their series, man, I think they have phenomenal series, you know, from Orange is the New Black to Ozark to The Crown. Yep. It's all good stuff. Yep, they definitely <laughs> have some good shows, for sure. Um, I think they do actually do really good with original like shows. Yeah. If it's an original absolutely. that's not based on something else, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can knock out a, an adaption pretty good, but uh, it seems like adaptions in general, like not even just Netflix, they're just not as good, right, as the right. source content. And we've talked about this. Um, the source is probably 99% of the time the best. Whether it be a book, mm -hmm. whether it be the original source was a game, whether it be it was um, even a movie. Sometimes the yeah, original source Yeah, redoing a movie, yeah. yeah. Um, or turning an original movie into a series. Um, looking at mm -hmm. you, Lord of the Rings, we've only seen a couple episodes I have not watched myself, but reviews seem to be a little bit mixed. So Yeah, um... Something was, I didn't dive too deep into this, so if I misconstrued it, I apologize. Something on Twitter about, like, uh, it's catching a lot of criticism, and it was, like, race-based, so I don't, I don't know what to expect from that. Um, so, take that with a grain of salt. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. 
Um, I might. Nick, are you gonna watch it? I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna try and watch Lord of the Rings. I will. I'll. Uh, the movies or the new show? I'm gonna do both. So okay. I want the movie. I want to refresh phenomenal. myself on the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually getting ready to watch. Whenever I have time, I'm gonna watch the first one, probably within the next month. Um, right. And but yeah, I'm gonna give this show a try, and I'll also yeah, I'll, update you guys on what my thoughts are. Yeah. So. I think I'll I think I'll wait for the uh, Nick review on the show before I uh, dive into it because it's just, I don't, apart from the Lord of the Rings films, I'm really not into that whole like uh, on horse bag and chivalry and elves and you know and all. I'm not that's not the fantasy type it's not anything I'm very too well interested in for the most part usually like I'm not as well but there's certain times where like a story and can gather like get my attention um right the first bit of Game of Thrones actually caught my attention oh. um and most people <laughs> will agree with you know the first few seasons of Game of Thrones were really good and Funny enough, those were the seasons that followed the book the most. It's when they mm. started the veer from the book is when it started to get a little went bit to, on the shit side. Yeah. So anyhow, um, what series I'm actually really looking forward to, and I've said this, is the Percy Jackson series. So. And yeah. that's because the author is actually very tightly knit with the, the storytelling of the TV series. So yeah, J.K. Rowling made sure she had, uh, I think she had veto power over everything in the films, the Harry and the Potter films. So, Which... and I think uh, it was successful for the most part. I didn't care for four. Four is my least favorite, even though it's one of my favorite books in the series. I just think it was poorly well done. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. I've been doing a little bit more reading on the the Harry Potter, um, like movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And people say the more you dive into the, the Harry Potter universe, the mm -hmm. worse the movies are. Yes. Because they 100%. do not follow the the books. Well But the it thing wasn't is... it wasn't bad. It was it was actually what I read was um there wasn't enough time in the movie Exactly to tell the story of the book. You know, Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, they're really easy because the books are like, you know, 300 pages. Right. And then from there, from the third on, they start getting exponentially larger. The largest being, I believe, five. I think five is the biggest. Uh, I think it outruns seven by just a few pages. So it's hard to fit a book that's like that thick into 90 minutes or, you know, even 120 minutes. So I think that would have been that would have done well being in like a, a series. I it's I say the same thing all the time. I think Harry would have been better as a series versus movies. Yeah, I think and that maybe we'll should see have been Harry series. the series sometimes. Yeah. But like then again, when that time period, it, like series weren't a big thing. Where nowadays right. series are huge. You yes. don't see as many movies anymore. You see series. Yeah, which, even the MCU starting to kind of go that way, aren't they? Kind of. Yeah. Um, it's definitely the way to do things, right? Uh, I think you can get more storytelling out of it, which I'm all for. Yeah, but. They do better when it's a limited series. Yeah. I, I think those are the best. Limited series, all right? The story can't be dragged on. You have mm -hmm. a certain amount of things you want to tell from either the source content or, you know, whatever it be. Mm -hmm. uh, like Harry Potter would have been really good. Limited series. Seven seasons. Boom. Yep. There's your seven books. They don't have to be the same episodes in each season, right? Only the amount of mm -hmm. uh, episodes you need for that season. Bang. Yeah, next, absolutely. Next season. So, oh, well, the movies are still pretty good. Um, yeah. I, like, the thing I, I always find interesting is when it comes to the Harry Potter universe, um, the Dementors are described and they, in my mind, they're very eerie and terrifying things. So I always wonder to the people that didn't read the books how terrifying the Dementor was the first time you've seen this soul-sucking creature you know yeah no i want to watch <laughs> harry potter again it's uh very interesting movie for sure it's a great it's a great world to dive into and escape i almost think but, like harry potter like that does better watching the movie and then reading the book i think is what i'm gonna try doing yeah 
But that could be interesting. I usually always uh, read the books and then watch all the films. So yeah. it could be interesting to do it the other way around. Yeah. I think you'll be really surprised at how much is left out, even yeah. in uh, Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's That's Stone. That's what I'm going with. Because I've watched the Harry Potter out. movies like way back, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I kind of yeah. go like, well, I've already seen the movies, but I haven't read the books. So I mm-hmm. almost want to be, all right, you know, I'm just going to watch the movie again. And then, you know, I got my refresher and then I'm going to read the book and then it'll kind of fill in all the gaps for me. Yeah. The thing that pisses me off most, and I know we're harping on Harry. We're, we're <laughs> trying to stay away from this because I can talk Harry Potter and baseball. I can talk for days on these two subjects. The thing that really pisses me off the most about the movies as it relates to the books is four is a wonderful book. It's where you see, you know, the biggest antagonist of them all come back to life. And the intro to Goblet of Fire is nowhere in the books. They pick up after like it's well past 100 pages in the book. And I can't stand that because it was such a good uh, intro to the no- to the book, to the hmm. story. But anyway. Anyway. Um, Harry Potter uh, universe is huge. So let's move on. Maybe we'll talk about it. It'll come up again in another podcast. The Potterverse, I'm sure. Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, all these yeah. uh, fantasy worlds that that uh, we dive into via video games, books, or films, or series. You know, we love them. Yeah. Content. <laughs> so we, we actually veered, like, way off topic there. We were talking about the Bioshock uh, yeah. film. Woo! That left but turn came out of nowhere. I want to talk a little bit more about shows here soon, but I want to switch gears and talk a little bit about broadcasting. Um, yeah. More of the Twitch area. Um, I'm going to go out right, right here and say it. Twitch is getting rid of the whole hosting thing. Which, if you don't know, Twitch has a hosting thing on their website. Where it's been there forever. Forever. Like You host another channel, so when you're offline and you go to that person's channel, it shows you the person that they're hosting instead. Yeah. Right? It's your way of promoting the streamers you like to watch and enjoy. Of saying, hey, I'm not live right now, but here you go. You yeah. Know? So they're kind of... Taking the axe to that and saying that's no longer a thing. It's not even going to be a thing anymore. No. There's going to be some kind of rec- like recommended streamers list or something like that, is. which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I already do that anyway. But um, I just think it's kind of crummy. I think they want to push more people to do raids. Right. That way, a lot of people that lurk channels to help that, that broadcaster grow their community, you know, via numbers and whatnot and analytics... That lurker is getting shown more ads, therefore Twitch is making more money. That's the way I see things, because mm-hmm. I'm a sussy little chick. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, hosting, it's been around forever, and some reason they're axing it. Yeah, but. it's like out of nowhere, too. I wish they would. I wish Twitch would do like a town council, you know, town hall, <laughs> and be like, let's get no, your no. opinions on this. But they, they just make changes. No, this no, is no, interesting. No. Speaking of Twitch, about three weeks ago, this theme popped. This little, like, top left-hand corner of my um, follower list popped up, right? Where you go and see everyone mm. you're following that's live. The top, it was like, your three pinned channels. Yep. And so I, I pinned I, I pinned you and, and Pepper and one other streamer, and now it's gone. <laughs> like, that feature came in... Stayed three weeks and left. I guess the feature didn't like it or Twitch didn't like it. And uh, yeah. it is no longer I used there. that too. I, I pinned a couple people up there. And then I went to go look again. It was there. Like the feature was there, but my pinned channels were gone. So I, I don't think it really? was working. I don't think it was working right. And I think they kind of just silently removed it because I don't think it was working right. <laughs> Because, yeah, yeah. I, I added channels on there, and then next thing you know, they weren't up there anymore, but I could still mm-hmm. pin people. So it might not have been working properly, so they kind of, they probably just silent really removed it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, but I wonder if that's something that's going to come back or if it's they're like, eh, that wasn't that big of a deal. I don't think, I feel like I don't think it'll come three, back. Yeah, I feel like three was a bit too limited. Like, I wanted at least two more people I wanted to pin. <laughs> Even then, like, once you have that, then, you know... I just look through my follow I, list anyway. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really see the need for it because right. it's on your follower list. You're looking at your followers right there, unless it was there like all the time. 
that way you could see, oh, so-and-so just went live while I was watching the stream and I didn't know it or something like that. I don't know about like you, but um, <clears throat> when I look at my follow list and I'm looking for a specific streamer, mm -hmm. I have a very good idea how many viewers they have. Yeah. Because your follow list is, you know, based by viewers. So I'll look in that order. I'll kind of go for that area. And right. that's how I, like, it makes it pretty quick for me to figure out um, if somebody that I want to watch is live because they're usually mm -hmm. in the, the same area, roughly on my follow list. Right. So, yeah. But Twitch is adding their own shout out um, command, which <laughs> there is already a shout out command through bots um, where you shout out a streamer and it'll put the link to their channel in your stream. Um, however, this is going to be a little bit different because Twitch has got to put their own twist to it. So if you do slash shout out um, and then the channel name, it'll come up with a little box in the chat where you can hit the follow button directly. So you don't need to click on the link, go to the channel um, and hit the follow button. It's kind of just there in the chat where you can just hit the follow button. So it's a little bit different, but it's like this does not make up for the, the, the hosting remove. So yeah, they're like taking something that was unique to Twitch away and they're giving something that pretty much every streamer has had day, you know, as long as I've been on, you know, freaking the platform. Right. It's like, oh, let me get a bot so I can, you know, have these commands. Shout out being one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty cool that like it will put their follower button right there in chat. Like, it, I guess it removes the step of having to click on their name, which there for a while, they had it to where, and I think it's back to this, but for a while it was where you clicked on their name, you could follow them right then and there. And then it went away for a long time where you had to click on their name and then navigate to their page and then click on their follow button. But I think if I go over here and I click- Yeah, uh, you can click on a name and you can see everything yeah, there. Yeah, but yeah, the follow button has returned. Right. There for a while, it wasn't there. Like you couldn't just click on a name in the chat and and um, follow them, which was kind of an, an annoying. <laughs> yeah, but oh, we'll see. Um, that's not out yet. That's coming. Coming shortly. soon, TM. So, but yeah, other than that, like uh, you know, do you have anything else to say about uh, Twitch World? Um, I would say uh, I just wrote this down. Be inspired by others. No one likes to copycat. You know. Um, if you see something that another streamer is doing, like be it a shout out or some kind of effect or something like that, um, at, talk to them about it. They, for the most part, streamers are uh, very friendly people and they're willing to, to help you in any way and shape or form that they can. You know, um, but, you know, take whatever it is you're asking about it, put your own spin on it, and um, don't just go in and copy everything they did, you know. Word for word, letter for letter, emote for emote, because no one likes a copycat. And you need to be yourself, you know, interject your, your individuality into whatever it is you're doing. Try to take something and, yeah, like um, like you said, put your but, own twist to it. Sometimes exactly. it can be really rewarding to Absolutely. figure out something on your own and mm -hmm. add this into your stream because that's personalized to you. And when you see people um, use that feature maybe that you added, maybe it was a feature that you added uh, mm -hmm. to your stream... And you see people use it and like it, it's mm -hmm. way more rewarding than just yeah. using something from somebody else, right? Right. Um, this is... I agree. This area, like this whole t streaming thing, um, it's not for everybody. It's content creation. It's creating content. Creating, for people to, not content yeah. copying. Co exactly. You know, content exactly. creation. Um, <laughs> for the most part... <clears throat> As you know, streaming community, we are quite similar. There's a lot of similar things, but um, usually the successful streamers um, have their own twist, their own their unique own originality. properties, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's not saying that just because you're not doing well means that you don't have your own twist or your own uniqueness. Uh, right. This is a very saturated um, market. Market, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very saturated. It's hard to get out there and hard to grow. So. Especially after, like, in post-COVID, this platform has exploded. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's died down a lot now because everyone's oh, finally it? going out. Yeah, actually, the numbers yeah. numbers have really shown that um, just this past couple months, because mm -hmm. the restrictions have kind of let out, everyone's going out and, and, you know, 
trying to make Touching up for the last again. yeah trying to make up for the last two years of being stuck inside. Mm-hmm. So uh, the numbers are way down on Twitch right now. Um, That's good. probably not compared like to it. before COVID, but compared to when it was first a thing. So right. Um, um, yeah. But yeah. I don't really have anything else to say on broadcasting right at this time. No, we've Other talked a lot a, about it in previous it's, podcasts. It's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. Yeah. I've enjoyed my, my streams here lately. Yeah. I'm going to miss you guys because I'm going away for the weekend, but other than that. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I was away last weekend. Um, mm-hmm. And then now I'm starting up school, so it's it's been hard to get on there, right? Uh, I think yesterday, like, I did want to stream, but I was just tired. You know, mm-hmm. I was tired. I had a little bit of a headache, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to relax. Um, because I know if I hit that stream button, it's going to be Factorio. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And you know? Factorio That's eats my brain. So if I got a headache, I... <laughs> yeah, you don't want to make it well. a bigger headache. Yeah, but no, I, like, uh... I've been enjoying Factorio. I come on and start streaming and it's just been Factorio. I, I'm having a great time on there. So I, I, I don't know anything that's going on in there, but, <laughs> but like, I enjoy watching you play Factorio. It's yeah. like, uh, I hated arc survival of the evolved or whatever that game's called with a passion but pepper played it for about 18 months and i watched every single stream because like i feel like the game gets you to the streamer and whether you stay or not kind of depends on the streamer i feel like you come for the game you stay for the streamer at least i do anyway you know some people i know are just there for the game footage and could care less but i don't know i i seek out you know streamers that that are unique and creative and are fun <laughs> i'm a victim of game i'm a victim mm-hmm. of game where i i have my streamers that i you know like i'll go on and I'll, I'll actually watch them um play games that maybe i'm not usually interested in but i i'm probably lurking I'm not engaged right. actually i'm <clears throat> i'm lurking most of the time anyway even if it's a game that i do enjoy <laughs> I am so heavy on lurking. I like having, you know, my time where I just put up a stream. I'm doing my own thing because, you know, I like to stay busy. I'm usually doing my own thing on my computer or um, maybe just relaxing, whatever it be. Um, So I'm heavy on lurking anyway. But yeah, I'm heavy on games. If I see a streamer playing a game I want to see, it's going to be first. (laughs) Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, And lurking makes Twitch go round. You know, I'm a heavy lurker myself, and we love the lurkers. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Uh, we always love anybody that comes and support us, whether absolutely. it be uh, watching the stream, uh, even coming in, just following us, uh, mm-hmm. talking in the chat, anything, anything, right? Yep. Um, goes a long way. Absolutely. We do enjoy um, our communities. That's why we're here doing this. That's These, right. Some people are here for the communities. Some people are here for the business. Some mm-hmm. people are here for both. So, yep, I'm here for like from day one. My thing is always I want to build a community of yeah. like-minded individuals that enjoy each other's company. Like that's my whole thing on on Twitch. <laughs> that's, but, um, that's one way to put it. But yeah, uh, I, I enjoy streaming. That's why I come on here. I do too. It's a lot of fun. It's very um, rewarding. I think more recently, it's been something I do when I find time. Right. Because, you know, with school and everything going on, I find well, it a little you bit knew, harder. Like, yeah, you knew you were going to have this big life change. Yeah. So you've been you've been preparing your viewers for months saying, you know, school's in September. And so we know, yeah. well, oh, you know, he has he has another ball up in the air now that he has to juggle. And sometimes, you know, the one that you really want to do is the one that you get to do the least just because that's life. You At know? the end of the day, um, when I've finished school and everything, this is going to be the thing that pays my bills, right? Mm-hmm. Where streaming is always going to be that thing where I can come on and, you know, enjoy my time with my community. Right, exactly. That's, that's my my entertainment Hot take. in a yeah. way to put it, right? Um, right. I am entertained with being the entertainer, so. It, yeah, I I enjoy having conversations. So yeah, s- streaming is a is a good medium to uh, to you know to have conversations <laughs> and to be funny and let your hair down, and have a good time while you're playing video game. Hell yeah, <laughs> I think my biggest thing too though 
is I find myself when I'm streaming and playing a game, mm -hmm. I find myself actually more engaged with the game than if I were to do it when I'm not streaming. I'm more involved with the game. So if it's a story That's game, interesting. Yeah. When I, if it's a story game, I'm more mm -hmm. into the story and I'm actually, I find myself, you know, um, mostly because I feel like I have to make more content. I have to be that extra thing on top of the video game, right? Right, yeah. Um, I have to have my own twist to it. So I'm there, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging with the story, I'm, I'm giving my input, I'm, I'm trying to do all those things, right? Where I find mm -hmm. if I were to, you know, play a game off stream, like a story game, I'm just going to sit there, I'm going to play through it, and I might forget about half of it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So what you been watching lately? Uh, so I recently finished Ozark, finally. finally. All four seasons are all done. Ozark is wrapped up, and what a <clears throat> phenomenal show. Wendy so was not lying when she said, I need to watch this show, and I'll enjoy it. Very good, very good. It's um, Watch it. If you haven't watched it, what are you waiting for? You yeah. can come thank me on next episodes. You can send us an email and thank me after you watch it, because it is really, really, really good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an incredible <laughs> show. Uh, I always say this. So season one and two, I find are actually a little bit different than three and four. It's, all, yeah, it's like a, I, I it's quite a change that. actually happened in the show. Um, like right off the bat when season three picks off. And if when you watch through the show, you'll you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It starts off a lot different. Um and then I find season three is a lot of building up on story. And then season four mm -hmm. is a lot of ha like the story ha just happening. So I don't. Um, Jason Bateman played a big role in getting Ozark off the ground. Um, I don't think it was going. I don't think he ever dreamed it would be what it what it, it, it became. I don't think he thought it would get picked up for a second season, much less become this you know huge phenomenon that everyone right. fell in love with so i think it even caught him off guard at uh how incredible and amazing it became yeah a very cool show so if you have not watched all four seasons of ozark go do it you'll phenomenal enjoy. story you will enjoy it especially if you've already enjoyed season one and two you're gonna enjoy season mm -hmm. three and four like already 100 yep. percent. like it's already a given mm -hmm. you might even enjoy it more oh I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I did too. So. And if you're if you're a skeptic of it and but you uh, really enjoyed um, Breaking Bad or Dexter, I get those uh, references quite a lot. Then you will enjoy Ozark. Breaking Bad. Um, I thought Better Call Saul was a really good one as well. I enjoyed watching. I need to watch Better Call Saul. That's a good series uh, as well. Better Call Saul. I started was really it, cool. but I think it. I think Better Call Saul must be a slow burn too because it. I couldn't get into it right off the bat. First season is definitely on the slower side. It does mm -hmm. pick up. It picks up a little bit more. So it's yeah. it's a good one. So I think there's five seasons to it. So Yeah, that's that's on my watch list for sure. Yeah. Um, another show I've actually... So I finished Ozark and then... So yesterday I was lying down and I opened up Netflix. And this is the first thing that showed up on the screen. It was a show called Devil in Ohio. Just mm -hmm. brand new released on Netflix, uh, limited series. I think there's going to be a second season. I'm not sure, but I watched the entire season one. Anyhow, um, it's based on a book that was, um, I think, only a few years ago. Uh, basically, it's about a girl that escapes a cult. And um, yeah, escapes a cult. But like, if you are any familiar with a cult it's kind of engraved into your brain that you want to go back mm -hmm. right right you, like, or mm -hmm. you need to go back that's right that's a better way to portray it. you don't want to go back but you need to because that's all you know in life mm -hmm. so um it's kind of a whole story about that where um like it's like a psychiatrist or something tries to help uh keep her from going back but it's eight se eight episodes sorry and the reviews are a little bit mixed uh, on it, okay? So I, I read some of the reviews, and mm -hmm. this was my whole standing on it. It's a thriller series, so it has a little bit of, you know, some scary stuff to it. Um, not too crazy, though. It's not horror. It's thriller. So um, a lot of people were saying there's a lot of cl cliche things. It's very cliche. 
Okay. I'll agree with it. There was a lot of cliche <clears throat> things where, you know, something happens, you know what's going to happen after, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's the whole show on that. But for somebody that hasn't watched very many thriller shows, mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed it. Like it was kind of something new to me. Um, whereas if you're already into the thriller series and stuff, like you've watched enough like thriller series where you're kind of already going on some of these shows like oh i know what's going to happen next it might not be for you it's probably not the best show but i heard the book's really good i read the reviews on the book i heard it's really good so i'm actually i might actually pick up the book or something one day so um i don't know i i like thrillers so i might yeah i think i'll uh give that a watch for sure it has Um, a lot of drama um, aspects to it so be prepared mm -hmm. for that it's a lot of drama like teenage drama i'm always interested in um things about cults like i find that cult culture is fascinating you yeah know, it was pretty you're, fascinating um you're a cult that's gonna catch a ride at the end of uh, the hellbop comet that was like back in the late 90s and like all these people killed themselves you know type thing and then there was a big cult down in south america or something where the dude gave everyone like kool-aid and they all drank it and they all died you know crazy <laughs> crazy shit man so yeah that's that kind of stuff always um I find fascinating. Then, like, the super religious, like, I'd call it a cult, but it's like a super religious church, and it's a true story, and it's there's a documentary on, on, about it on Netflix as well. I think it's called, like, um, Be Sweet or something like that, and it's about, like, you know, the Mormon church and, you know, a, a, well, a wing of the Mormon church. I don't want to group them all in, you know, collectively, but some, you know, wacky-ass wing of the Mormon church, like, they, you know marry 11 year olds to like 40 and 50 year olds olds. so it's really sick and then you know the government's like what are we gonna do about it so Mm. it's i would recommend it it's like it's something like be sweet or something like that on Mm. netflix it's it's really interesting it's really good and it is true so yeah it's uh it's good yeah this one's is supposed to have some true aspects to it i don't i haven't read Mm -hmm. up on what's true or what's not but right um like i said i do want to dive into the book so i heard the book's a really good page turner so yeah. I'm all I'm there all for go. a page turner because we actually just we <laughs> we read a page turner way back, right? Yes, so. we did. Yeah, the sanatorium. Yeah. Gonna, that might end up. I'm gonna at the end of the year, I'm gonna do like Wendy's favorites or Bravo's favorites, and right now sanatorium's in the lead for book by far. I've heard on some reviews that the newer one, the retreat, is better. So I'm interested in. No way. How? How? How heard, could it possibly be better? I heard it's better. So some people okay, didn't even well, like the sanatorium. To... They said it wasn't very well written. So, but there's some reviews. All yeah. right, you know everybody's book got their smokes. own take on it. So, um, <laughs> but I've heard. I don't that... like. I don't like your book. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know how people be. So. <sighs> yeah, people be, people people be having opinions. Wake waking up mad at the world. Like, I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like your book. I don't like your show. I don't like your game. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, well, yeah, bye. okay. Um, <laughs> what have you been watching? Whatever, my dude. Um, I finished All in the Family, the 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 sitcom from the early seventies, and uh, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I would say for today's day and age, it is rather spicy. You couldn't make this show today because of some of the topics they hit on. But I don't think I wouldn't say this show is like a bigoted show or racist show or prejudicial show because I feel like they hit on some IRL topics that were back in the 70s that are still being discussed today. So it's like, have we came that far from 1970? Maybe not because some of the stuff that there's these hot button issues that were back in 1970 are still uh, hot button issues today, if not even more so. On their show's uh, two hundredth episode celebration, I thought I found this extremely fascinating. All in the Family was the first show on primetime television where it showed the husband and the wife in the same bed. Because if you are a lover of any old series, be it Dick Van Dyke Show, I Love Lucy, or whatever, you always know. Lucy and Ricky always slept in separate beds because back then in the 50s, Pearl Clutch, we couldn't have a man and a woman in in bed because that would that would give, you know, 
that that would uh, you know suggest sex and 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 naughty things <laughs> like that, and we can't have things like that on the airwaves, you know. So when uh, All in the Family came out with this episode of Archie and Edith in bed together, you know the the what is it the FCC or whatever was like you can't do that, and they were like, why not, you know? There are husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends and, you know, walks of every life across this whole country. And every night they go to bed with each other, you know. You're the one with the dirty mind here thinking that, oh, they're sleeping together. Therefore, ergo, they must be, you know, up to something it, versus yeah. they're just sleeping. Yeah, you know, right? it's a you know, middle age. We're humans, we got to sleep. <laughs> exactly. So I found that very profound and interesting. And it it is a... I found it'd be a breath of fresh air to watch something that old in 2020 and see, you know, like Archie Bunker, this really closed minded, prejudicial man who thinks he isn't, you know, prejudiced, but like he kind of he 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 is Archie Bunker's definitely bigoted um, versus, you know, he has a son in law that's super liberal and watch these two have arguments all day. The uh, son in law is actually Rob Reiner. And I didn't realize that till I was like a season and a half in. When I finally looked up to see who played a mic, and I was like, whoa, that's Rob Reiner. So, uh, yeah, he's, I think he's m known more today for his uh, directing. Like, he's done a lot of really good, like, rom-coms and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a really good show, and I, I think I think it still speaks truth to power in yeah. today's world. No, you're, you're hitting, you know, all the audiences. Some people, you know, enjoy going back and watching these older shows, mm -hmm. or maybe there's people out there listening that grew up on this stuff, right? My mom listens to the podcast and she's from that time and she actually yeah. enjoyed you talking about All in the Family on one of the previous podcasts. So shout out to yeah. my mom listening out there. Um, maybe there's other people that have grown up on this stuff listening. Um, definitely quite the time differences looking at, you know, things released back then and what mm -hmm. you see now. So it's huge getting yeah. these perspectives and everything. So yeah. shout out to Nick's mom. Hello. <laughs> um, thank you for listening. Um, I enjoy watching older, older series. Um, I have a very bad habit of wanting to just watch something that I've already seen again versus picking up something new. Right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I I remember when All in the Family came on. It, it, it's Nick at Night picked it up basically, and Nick at Night back then was you know they showed some of the older shows for. You know the you know the 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 adults of the '90s basically. You know they got to see some of the shows they grew up on, and whatnot. But you know a lot of my age, we watch those shows too. That's why like there is this, you know, love 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 relationship with Golden Girls because Golden Girls is on Nick at Night. It introduced the Golden Girls to my generation. Right. So. I never watched All in the Family, and I can kick myself for it because it really is a beautiful story of a family growing up, you know, in the 70s. And, um, you know, getting, you know, African-American neighbors for the first time and hearing what Archie has to say about that versus Mike, who's, you know, really gives Archie the old heave-ho. And, um, yeah, it's... I would... I tell anybody go watch it. Go watch it. It's a great. It's a great series. It's something that I think everyone can learn from for sure. Kind of like a Roseanne. I think everyone should watch Roseanne. It has a mm. lot of um, lessons you can learn from that from those kind of series. <laughs> I've already learned all yeah. the lessons. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> all the lessons. Um, I watched Venom two. I enjoyed it. It wasn't as good as the first one, I've but it that. was all right. It's I've, it's all right. Not the I think, first person I've heard that from. I, I, think there's going to be a third one they set it up for it to be a third one i'll put it that way um i can't even remember what streaming plat i want to say it was netflix it might have been paramount plus but i watched this movie i saw the light a film about hank williams the the country star from like way back back then too like he he was like picking and grinning back in the 50s as well yeah, you lost me um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I knew that Hank Williams, um, well, he sings stuff like You're Cheating Heart. Like, he has some really big country and Western hits. And I knew he died young, but he died, like, uh, spoiler alert, I guess, Hank Williams passed away when he was 29. Wow. That dude was really, really young. But about 20 minutes into this movie, I was like, man, the actor playing Hank Williams looks really familiar. 
So I went on to IMDb, the International Movie Database. I, I use that app probably at least four or five times a week, at least. And I was like, I'll be damned. The person playing uh, Hank Williams is Tom Hiddleston. Or you might know him better as Loki. Is so, right you, th yeah, this guy that's, play you know, everyone knows is playing this, uh, you know, Marvel villain, you know, type dude in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. you know, very, he's a god. And now he's here playing this little honky-tonk man, you know, trying to sing into a can. I was like, oh my god, this is it. I don't know, for me, it sweetened the movie that much because I was like, oh, I'm sitting here. I'm appreciating a really good actor right now because, man, that is the range to go from <laughs> playing Loki to playing Hank Williams. That and is, he, uh, yeah. I, I think he did a brilliant, brilliant job. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it was really good. So you, really were, good you movie. would recommend that movie for sure, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. It's it's really good. Um, I learned a lot about Hank Williams that I didn't know. And uh, he is he was he was a fascinating person. Um, it definitely went before his time for sure. Um, All right. I guess I got to add this to my list, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, but, you know, I don't think, I don't know if you'd enjoy it or not. But as someone who grew up on country music, I really, you know, appreciated it. Um, Fair enough. And then another show that caught my uh, eye, this is on Paramount+. Plus. There's only one season of it, so I watched it, I binged it basically over two days, and that's Mayor of Kingstown, and it has Jeremy Renner in it. Uh, going back to, you know, connections to Marvel, he plays uh, Hawkeye, I think is his names. name. You're not? Well, no. he's the guy that sh shoots the bow and arrow, and he was always like uh, him and Scarlett Johansson kind of oh. go hand in hand together. Yeah. Jeremy Renner, he's a brilliant actor. He's been in a ton of stuff, but he, uh, there's this town, I want to say it's in Michigan. It's either Michigan or Wisconsin. And, um, there are like five prisons in this town. Like, that's the whole premise of this, uh, this, this show. And the mayor, like, there, there's no such thing as a clean person in this town. Everyone is corrupt. Like, everyone, everyone. is corrupt. I mean, that's true and the, in today's world, right? In, in every right, town. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, uh, he's not the he's not really the mayor of Kingstown, but he runs the biggest gang in Kingstown, and that is the police uh, authority and the, um, what do they call people that, that work at prisons? Like uh, guards or something. Like, yeah, he, like he, guards, he basically, basically runs them. And so between them and working with all the gangs, both inside and out, he coordinates what goes on in all these prisons. Oh. It is really good, and I can't wait for season two. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. You're getting my interest on a lot of these. Um, yeah, it's really good, and it, it 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 is not a slow burner. Like, it'll get you right from the get-go. Kind of like Yellowstone. Yellowstone gets you right from the get-go as well. Yeah, I think that's actually incredibly important because um, we're in a you know, age of, you know, we need to get our attention grabbed really quickly. Uh, yeah. Look at you, TikTok, right? It's a, uh, you got a attention grab right away. Otherwise, you know, Absolutely. you just scroll right through. And I think that's the same mm -hmm. way with shows, movies, etc. You need to grab the attention right from the start. Otherwise, yep. you know, we're just going to move on to the next thing. Hey, I feel like slow burners are going to die a slow and painful death because <laughs> it's like, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. Like usually if, uh, if, I'm not into a book by the hundredth page. I'll stop reading. I'll be like, this hasn't grabbed me. I'm going to move on. You mm -hmm. know? Same with a, like a series or something. You know, if I watch mm -hmm. one episode and I don't like it, I'm probably not going to watch anymore. Yeah. Right. Um, I all, I came so close to doing that with Ozark because I do not like the first episode of Ozark. I do not. I did not like it at all. I thought, oh, this is some wacky, tacky bullshit. And I was like, I'm not going to watch it. And then I watched like a couple more episodes. I was like, okay, I'll play. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, um, um, that's shows and stuff for you. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we've come on and had a big change from the last podcast. We've definitely made a lot oh, of progress yeah. in watching things. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, me finishing Ozark and then even finishing a whole other show. That's like incredible for me. <laughs> Usually I'm like a couple episodes between podcasts. You go. But no, yeah, uh, so going on from here, I think we're going to dive into Stranger Things finally. Because I think we've been talking I've about been that for a little for bit. I've been and waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. I've been saying I I'll do it after Ozark, and here I am, finally finished Ozark. So it's time to finally dive into Stranger Things. 
So let's go. We're going to be talking about that coming on. Uh, obviously, no spoilers. We're just going to talk about how we enjoy it and what we think of it, mm-hmm. our thoughts yep. and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. There you um, go. Shows and everything. I've watched I've watched the first season of Stranger Things. I'm going to start with the first season anyway, because that was so long ago that it's going to be like watching it over again. So. Right. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. I don't know why. I just I'm very bad about like not continuing something, I'm the same way, like yeah. a series or whatnot. Especially if the next one's not available right then. Right. I, I'm very same. bad at like, you know, mm-hmm. a year later, you finally you have the next season. But I might already be busy with something else and then I forget about it. Right. It comes out. Right. I've already forgotten about it. So. Um, yeah, like uh, they split the last season of Ozark into two parts, and I was so afraid I was going to get spoiled on that show because I didn't watch the first part. I was like, I want to wait till it's all done and dusted. And even then, I, it was probably a good three, four months after the final, you know, season or the final second half of the final season came on. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm ready to dive in, so. Let's get uh, Stranger yeah. Things yeah, on looking, the way. And... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to Stranger Things. But yeah, that's something you got to be weary about is if you like something, try to keep up with it. Otherwise, if you're on the internet, you may get spoiled. Yeah, so. yeah, I think uh, spoils spoilers have already gone out all over for um, many of these popular shows, right? And mm-hmm. crazy enough, I'm on the internet all the time and I've yet to come across a spoiler. I will never for forget. I was, I was moderating for a streamer one night. And this was when... Um, the what was the last series of big star war movies with rue or ren or ray or whatever her name was and uh something big happens in the first uh the first movie and all us moderators were very hyper aware that you know we're gonna catch any spoilers for this because the streamer had asked us to make sure you know and it was a really big streamer at the time um, make sure we get any spoilers from this. And we were, we were on it, man. We were getting timing people out, you know, whatnot, giving them 24 hour timeouts. Right. And then someone subscribes with a name oh, and spoils my. it. And it was like, you gotta be kidding me, you know? So yeah, you got, you gotta be weary when you're on the internet. If you don't want something spoiled, you know, proceed with caution. <laughs> I've, I've yet to have something like to a show I was looking forward to watching and I've, I've yet to see a spoiler for it. So, um, now that I said I that, guess... it's going to bite me in the ass, but. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not fun. I, I was spoiled on that, which I'm not. I enjoy the Star Wars films. I'm not saying like I'm a. I'm not as crazy about them as like Potter World or anything like that, but they're good. I enjoy them. It's just another world you can escape to, I guess. Um, but yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. my quote for the week, I had to dig one up on Spur of the Moment. It's a it's an oldie, but a goodie. And it's from a man that I loved with all of my heart, who I cried uh, when I heard of his passing. And, oh, yes. And I will mourn him forever. And that is um, from the fantastic and amazing film Dead Poet Society. Robin Williams says, no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. And it's so true. Yeah, that is uh, that is very true. Uh, as much as you don't want to believe it. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it may seem like, what can you do? You're just one right. person with one voice, but, you know, butterfly wings cause hurricanes or some shit like yeah. that, you know? So Domino effects. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anything, <clears throat> right? Just knock, one knocks into another, right? So mm, Exactly. Um, maybe you personally don't have a big effect on, you know, immediately around you. But, you know, you having one effect on one person can have an effect on another person that just keeps mm-hmm. going on and on and on and on and on, right? There you so, go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's a good quote. That's a good quote. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a quote. Um, it's actually from a yeah. book series that I've just finished reading. Percy Jackson. Right. Just Woo-hoo, finished the Percy. Percy Jackson and the Olympians a book series. Finish up book five. I'm ready to dive into the next one from Rick. And that is the Lost Hero. That is Heroes of Olympus series. And I've actually, so I like to keep on top of my bookshelf here, if you guys are watching. So um, 
Uh, if you're watching on Spotify, you can actually see the video and everything, but I like to change my bookshelf to have immediately what I'm watching or reading, sorry. Uh, Percy Jackson's there would have finished, and then I got Lost Hero over here is the next title I'm going to be diving into. So there I'm excited. Go. But the quote goes as If my life is going to mean anything, I have to live it myself. Wonderful and now, so true. Yeah, this could uh, this is another deep one too, right? Um, you have to live your life yourself. You can only, you know, live vicariously through other people and whatnot. Yeah. But that that's only going to carry you so far, and it's not that far. You know, you've got to realize what you want to do, and you got to do it. Yep. <laughs> yep. So books, even if it's uh, you know, geared towards teens, like you know, right? Has some good life quotes in there all right quotes are Absolutely. everywhere you just gotta yeah. look for them so i'm excited to see as the series goes on maybe i'll have some more quotes from that series for you guys absolutely yeah because that usually whole when i hear a good is... quote i'll yeah i'll write it down yeah it's pretty large isn't it oh very huge uh he's been writing since 2000 shit when did the first one come out six five <laughs> that five six i think six five mm -hmm. or six or something right and he's mm -hmm. just finished I, actually he's actually talked about writing it even more uh, he's probably going to be writing even more um okay but you know he's been going one book a year i think is what he's released his pace yeah yeah That's one awesome. book a year which is actually a pretty good pace um they're very well written i was actually mm -hmm. very impressed with how written and um when this tv series comes out like I'm, I'm hyping myself up too much. I'm going to be let down Don't, by this. Yeah. Put it on the simmer. Don't let it boil over. No. Like, <laughs> this has potential <laughs> no. to be, like, almost like, uh, you know, a Harry Potter universe. Absolutely. Like. Absolutely. Yeah. It's geared towards the younger audience. Like, Harry Potter was geared towards, you know, mm -hmm. a teen era. era. Uh, like, that was huge. Teens loved it. Right, as well as young adults and that that, but like a lot of um, people grew up with Harry. Yeah, I was I was like right after you know, so I didn't necessarily grow up with him and through school and whatnot. But my best friend, who you know, she's pretty much she was pretty much like um, Harry's age as she's reading through these books. She'll tell you, you know, she grew up with Harry. Harry was her childhood. So I'm sure there are a lot of people that say the same thing about um. Rick's books there. Yeah, Percy Jackson. Yeah, I think a lot of people have grown up with uh, reading his <clears throat> books. And I actually, that makes a lot of sense that you said that, you know, growing up with it. Because mm -hmm. I think when the C series comes out, I think most people will actually be between 20 and 30 years old. Is They're what I would guess. It. I think they'll be mm -hmm. between 20 and 30 years old is majority of the audience. Because those are the people that have grown up when these books were, you know, coming out and being released. Yeah, and that, uh, that universe is probably going to, you know, finally get their due. They've probably been saying for years in that little, you know, in, in that universe, that why aren't we getting the movie deals, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that their stories are, are coming to the screen. Oh, it's so cool. I, I mean, there's been a movie before, but, you know, we've talked about that. It, it wasn't was, all that great. I remember watching it, and it, I liked the story, but it was, you could tell it was low budget. Yeah, like way too low, um... I think this is gonna be great. All right, these these books are Disney books, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you know the the budget for the show is gonna be all Disney. So if you got Disney money, you ain't got no budget. You just do whatever the hell you want. To. That's right. Yeah. Um. And we have really cool technology to incorporate all these cool things because mm -hmm. when you read these books, sometimes I'm sitting here, I'm like, that's gonna be a lot to put on the screen. It's gonna be a lot. Right. Like, there's a lot involved in these books. Um, but, I mean, Harry Potter was the same way. There's a lot involved in those, yeah, too, Yeah, I was right? going to say, Harry Potter was the same way. And yeah. I'm like, I almost want to see them, as much as I don't want to, I'd like to see them redo the movies, just because I think they, they could better portray it now. But, anyway. I think it's incredible <laughs> what they did in the past. I, it I is. It's hard to it believe, really like, is. back when these movies came out, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, how was the technology so good? <laughs> Well, There's a I lot think of money that's in these why, movies. Yes, there is. I think that's why Star Wars was done like it was because um, what's his 
face the writer and director of those films. I think he believed he could he couldn't have done one episodes one, two, and three justice. So that's why he did four, five, six first, and then did one, two, three as technology allowed mm. him to do. Right. But yeah, no, uh, I'm excited to see what we have. I think they're using a new technology in order to make the, these the series, right? It's like a whole That's new awesome. technology that Disney has, and uh, it's going to be interesting. So, if yeah, you you have me looking forward to it. <laughs> look, if the Let's story go. writing's terrible, <laughs> at least it look good. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, but anyhow, uh, that should be. Um, there is no release date on it though, so should be next year. Yeah, they have probably. the date kind of next year right now, Maybe but like it could be next September. I bet. Yeah. Uh, but it could for, be for um, show. Even later than that, but we don't know, so we'll see. Right. Disney might be like, all right, we got to push some dates here, but you know, I feel like Usually Rick's, Disney, Rick's very like, patient. He's very patient. Yeah, right? I feel. I feel like Disney has a decent reputation of saying we're not gonna give you a. Uh, release date it'll be ready when it's ready right. you know and so yeah hopefully that uh stays there but apart from gaming and broadcasting what else you been up to school school well you went somewhere too <laughs> i went to quebec city um <laughs> yeah gosh uh yeah so quebec city like, i went to this past weekend and trying to pull something out of you here and it's like Come that on. was <laughs> Look, I only think so far back, all right? I can't even think oh I can't even gosh. remember what I've eaten, all right? So you're talking about right. like something that was 4 days four, 6 days ago, so you know, I can't I can't even think I can't remember how many days oh ago this gosh. shit was. Oh my gosh. So uh but no, uh I went to Quebec City up here in Canada and I went to the old Quebec City and it's very very similar to like France style, which I've never mm. seen, but I've seen in movies, right? You, you see a lot right. of Paris and and whatnot, um, all the old style. It, it's actually really neat. It was very cool. Uh, obviously, it was all tourist. Mm -hmm. So the majority language was actually English, but they have a lot of French things there, which was really neat. Right. Um, but yeah, I wish I spent more time there. I think I might go there again next um, next year because it's oh, not yeah. far from here it's a five and a half hour drive to go to quebec city so god yeah. to me that sounds far <laughs> that's like as far as it is to get to like nashville i'm like oh nashville is so far well you know <laughs> i'm used to driving yeah, things far, are, right? so yeah things are, are different in america versus canada yeah um, uh things are definitely more spread out so mm -hmm. um, but for yeah. sure this coming weekend, I'm actually going to Maine. I'm going into the Americas. Yeah. Oh my God, as a Canadian. You're coming I'm into America. I'm going to Maine. Awesome. I'm going to, uh, God, there's a city just above Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of shopping. I'm going shopping basically for clothes. Fun. With my mom. So. That'll be awesome. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't been to the How States is... since. Oh God. 2016 <laughs> or 17 <laughs> so been quite I haven't a while been now. to Canada since oh um oh never oh, oh I've yeah. been to Mexico I've loved Mexico but I've never been to Canada I'll have to go sometime um go see our lovely neighbors to the north theory oh yeah eh? um, I want I want to see a moose I root because I've like seen but you just can't compare something on television to seeing it with your naked eye. Like, oh, but they're that big. Like, uh, you know, they're bigger than your cars yeah, and everything. But like, yeah, and you can get that on the scale watching TV, but until you see it, it's yeah. like, you know, I've seen Pike's Peak, you know, in movies and shit, pictures and whatnot. But I remember seeing it that, that first day, because we got into Colorado uh, Springs at night, and then that next day it was really foggy, and when we came out of the store all the fog had cleared and it was just like boom big ass mountain in your face and I, my jaw hit the ground i was like yep floored it was breathtaking yeah so i, I want to go see the to see a and moose would yeah to to, to to see a moose would be freaking cool yeah come up to canada <laughs> eh, and come see our moose and uh yeah come to come, the drive through and get the there, timmies right? eh, and get your double get double and uh you know get some maple <laughs> syrup out there and you get your poutine <laughs> that's right there eh? i know um 
my favorite streamer, uh, Pepper, who is also Canadian, gives me hell whenever I mention I've never had poutine. He's like, oh my God, brother, you gotta get poutine. I'm like, we, we like we like gravy here in the South, and we like French fried taters, and we like cheese, but we've never put them together. But I'm like, I've even searched. Like, I have been like, best poutine in Atlanta. And I'm like, there's nothing here for that. So mm. I'm going to I'm just got to, I'm have to come up there and just have some poutine and come around, come home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, don't forget your double-double. <laughs> My double-double. I don't even know what that means. Usually when I'm ordering a double-double, it's like something to do with this, not coffee. <laughs> it's just two cream, uh, two sugar. For people that are audio only, I just picked up bottles of Maker Smart. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, double-double. Two cream, two sugar. Okay. Some of them get if the triple-triple. Was... <laughs> so what if I want like a single double? Well, then you, I don't then like you just gotta say it the old way. You know, you just gotta say gotta say what you want then scammed yeah scammed so you know you got your black coffee and then you got regular which is one and one you got double double two and two and you triple triple so i'd have to tell them like double cream and one sugar yeah that just doesn't sound as cool i know it's not that's why that's why we like up here you just get your double double <laughs> so i'd just have to i'd have to sacrifice and have sweeter yep. coffee than what i want exactly scam scam yep. that's that's the way to do it <laughs> yeah well i pretty much i've just been streaming i've been playing a lot of america truck simulator here uh did some euro truck as well finished the event um on uh, euro truck simulator scs has an event right now where you deliver um to hanover and if you do it on truckers mp you are going to be waiting uh but it's a lot of fun finished that and um started to play around with modded ats and it's been a lot of fun Oh and, yeah. Uh, I too will I'll be away this weekend. Not to my friend's house, but um I'm not away. Oh no, I, well I'm away for Saturday, but I'm here Sunday. So <laughs> there you go. I'm I'm there here Sunday. So I should I'll be back Sunday evening. Nice. But yeah, I guess that's about a wrap. Don't forget to send your questions and comments to us along with your um play the fifth questions. Questions that we must answer, whether we want to or not, to GBBS podcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, we better get out of your ears before you, uh, you know, I don't know, cut them off, cut off our vocal cords or something. But uh, don't don't do that. I like to talk. <laughs> man, we've been going here for almost two hours, so you're probably sick of us. Yeah. So we better we probably. better get out of you. Yeah, we better wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking. No, uh, we will be back in two it. weeks. Uh, so that yep. makes it september 21st we'll be doing it live and it should be posted to you guys by the 23rd there you go so be sure to uh, us, follow us uh, on the on... platform you're listening on mm -hmm. follow us on social media to get our any updates there you your go your socials are at brother chick 10 on twitter and instagram and twitch.tv slash bravo chick and you are I'm Nickinator15 on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, or the real Nickinator on Instagram. And one of these days, go. I'm just going to change it to the fake, the fake Nickinator because that would just be funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, but yeah, this is going to do it for us today. Thank you guys so much for being here. And Thank you so much. We'll catch you guys later. Send us your mail. We want to hear from you. Mail. GBBS podcast at gmail.com. Okay, bye. Bye.